If you were to watch any given YouTube video on language learning or language acquisition, you'd get the impression that there were two states of affairs, remembering things and not remembering things. And that remembering things was memory and not remembering things was not memory. But is it as simple as that? Let's take a look. I'm going to use a model of memory, but it's pretty standard. There's one bit where I'm going to change something, but it doesn't matter to my description. So I'm going to say memory is split into working memory, which is the things that you're working on at any one moment, sometimes known as short term memory and long term memory. Now, most YouTubers on language learning think that your task is to get things from short term memory to long term memory. And it doesn't matter how you do that. And so do lots of language learning apps. They talk about it, which is the one. Oh, I can't remember. One of them definitely talks about it. One of the, one of the more famous ones talks, has that in their description. Now, putting aside short term memory for a moment, yeah? Long term memory, I'm going to split into explicit memory and implicit memory. The simplest way to define those is that explicit memory is things that you're conscious of learning, you know about them, yeah? You have to retrieve them. And implicit memory, things that you're not conscious of learning, you can't necessarily, you can't really, unless you've reflected on it a lot, explain what it is you know, yeah? And they're automatic. Now, let's take explicit memory as part of long-term memory. Explicit memory, I'm going to split into semantic memory, an episodic memory. Semantic memory are things that we know about, the, that's, thing, that's things we know about the world, yeah? Uh, so, for example, I know that the Battle of Hastings was in 1066. The Great Fire of London was in 1666. The Second World War began in 1939. Although people do dispute that, don't they? Because Japan invaded China before then. It's very Eurocentric. But... These are semantic memories. I also know what a bias is. That's a semantic memory. I know that a bias, yeah, is when you unthinkingly accept things based on criteria that are irrelevant. So accusing me of bias in terms of my knowledge of language learning seems a bit rich considering I've spent multiple years studying it. You may not agree with me, but it's not necessarily a bias. Sidetrack there. So... Um, yeah, so those are all, that's all semantic memory, that's knowledge that I have of the world, yeah? Then, there's episodic memory. Remembering things that happened in my past. This is, you know, you don't remember everything, no? And the things that you do remember, you generally remember because they're quite distinct or unusual or different, yeah? So saying, I remember that time, I learned that somebody corrected me and that changed my language. Yep, you probably remember that because it's quite distinct or unusual. Because correction doesn't normally change language. So those are semantic and episodic memories. Now, language is neither of those. Because you can't think about it in order to retrieve it. If you are consciously thinking about it in order to retrieve it and sputtering out, yeah, like sentences, that is what Bill Van Patten calls language-like behaviour. It is not, it is not <laughs> implicit knowledge of language, which we're going to move over to, yeah? Now... I'm going to split, in, I think this might be controversial, I'm going to split implicit memory into two. I think it's like procedural things, which I would count languages under, yeah? Things that, knowledge, that is knowledge, no? It's not the same as habit, yeah? Now this is where we have to come in. Pavlov, yeah, when he got that dog to saliva because he rang a bell, that's a habit. Yeah, Skinner, the behaviourist, thought... Now, Pavlov was talking about classical conditioning. Skinner's talking about operant conditioning. It's a different process, yeah? 
One of them is just as training and association. The other is through feedback, created through positive and negative feedback and repetition, creating a habit. Language is neither of those things. So what's the other type? It's procedural knowledge. It's a type of implicit knowledge, unconscious knowledge that you use when you speak a language that I'm using now. Yeah? I have knowledge. Now, look. Knowledge, epistemologically, is a difficult word, yeah? So, epistemologically, we're, talk, we're reflecting on thinking about knowledge, yeah? I have knowledge of the grammar of English and Spanish and Portuguese and, 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 and Italian, because I can understand that as well. And I can... I can I, I, I can't tell you what I know, but I know I have knowledge of the grammar of those languages. And, um, but you might use a different grammar when you speak one of those languages. You don't have the same knowledge as me. We both have implicit knowledge. Now, this is epistemological and not cognitively we're talking. And that's why, really, you should add an S. To the end of the word knowledge and form knowledge is the same with semantic memory it should be knowledge is and not knowledge why are we say knowledge is because we're all very Euro eurocentric and we consider the knowledge created in about what france england britain sorry italy probably germany and the usa for some unknown reason because of biases, and that's what a bias actually is, has been taken as more worthwhile than knowledge is from other places. So we should really talk about knowledge is, but that's a side point, yeah? This type of implicit memory, you can see on this tree, no? Long-term memory split into explicit and implicit. Explicit split into semantic and episodic. Language is neither of those. You can have language-like behaviours that consist of those types of knowledge. Sorry. And then we have implicit habits, I'm saying, and um, procedural knowledge. Which is what language is. Language is none of the other things. You can have language-like behaviour from all of the other things. But knowledge of language that we use to speak fluently is none of those things. Now, that may be my biases governing me, but it seems to me like quite a reasonable explanation. So if you're going to disagree with me, let's see if you can make reference to the cognition and explain to me why that's wrong. Now, I also believe that this procedural knowledge is acquired in the same way, in the same way, and has to be acquired in the same way, it's such a specific type of knowledge, yeah? You get it by doing things, by your brain subconsciously noticing patterns, yeah? And enabling you to do those things better. You tell me why that model is wrong. That's James, future multilingual. Like the video, subscribe to the channel.